Look at this ice. Oh, crap, see, this is what I'm talking about. I wish I could show you guys these. <laughs> Walk Snail BRX attached to the HT0 goggles. And it is dead. It won't power up. Got this red screen of death. You know, stupid mistake on my part. Okay, guys, uh, at this time of year, this is about as good as it gets for Norway. So let's go ahead and get some test flights. So what we're going to be comparing today is my HDOs with the old SharkBite receiver, HD0 receiver, but SharkBite originally, versus the new HD0 goggles. And you can see I have quite a bit of different antenna set up on this one. I'm using my X2 errors here and a couple singularities. And on the VRX, we're going to be using the stock patches with those same singularities that I have on here. And we're going to be doing a little bit of a range test comparison of how the signal works uh, in the various locations around the property. But also, more importantly, how the two images look and how the feel of the quad is, because there should be a reduced latency with the new goggles. So we're going to go ahead and just jump into the test and see how it works. Here we go. Point, maybe you're wondering why I'm doing these tests and the reason is is because if you look at the LQ and the signal bars at the top you'll notice that the old VRX has much better LQ and much better signal bars than the new goggles. Now I did actually talk to Carl about this and he said it's a different calibration on the new goggles which is why you're getting much more fluctuation but I wanted to make sure that the performance itself really isn't any different and so that's why we're doing these tests right now. So based on these tests, it looks like the old VRX and the new goggles do perform more or less the same, and that's really good news. Now in a future video, I'm gonna be doing a proper long range test, and we'll really compare the two systems together and see when you get three, four, five, six kilometers out, do the systems really perform the same? And the other thing I took away from these tests, I think my favorite antenna setup is these horizontal X2 airs with two helical antennas. And that's most likely what I'll be running in the future. Um, these X2 airs were actually designed to be vertically mounted, and that gives you the widest field of view. But if you mount them horizontally like this, you're actually getting a bigger vertical field of view. And for me, flying up in the mountains, it's actually more beneficial to have a larger vertical field of view, especially since I'm so used to aiming helical antennas that I'm pretty much accurately aimed all the time anyway. Okay, so now we're gonna jump back to the goggles themselves and talk about how they operate and how the image looks on both goggles. So I just came back from the test flights. Uh, the HDOs actually look pretty good. Uh, the image is pretty nice, the screens are a good size. Uh, a couple things I hate about the HDO is this required battery to run this fan. Of course, you could probably get a smaller battery, but either way, it's such a nuisance, I almost forgot the battery. And on a cold day like this today, you'd be fogging up quickly. And the fitment of the goggles overall is just not as nice as the new HD zero goggles. Uh, but right now I'm just gonna do like a real side-by-side -side comparison, kind of just looking at both goggles at the same time. Okay, so immediate first impressions. HDO screen actually looks bigger. It's in this four by three aspect ratio, take up the whole screen, whereas the HD zeros have a 16 by nine optic. So you're actually only using the center of the optic, which means you're getting black bars on the side. Um, which in a way is kind of cool for your OSD elements because they can sit over there in the corner. How is the image though? Let's see here. So we're looking at the details of the car and the sky. And oh yeah, see, and the HDOs, I'm going to see if I can adjust this, but the sky is completely washed out. Can't see any detail in the sky really. Uh, and there's no detail in the shadows either. Right here, let's see here. So I just brought the brightness down. Let's see, I'm going to have to bring the contrast down. Don't think I can tweak the HDOs too much more to get details uh, in the shadows without losing all of the highlights. Uh, whereas the HD Zero goggles, I have really good details in the shadows and really good details in the highlights. And that's extremely important when flying FPV because you need to see where you're going and those things become critical. I wish I could show you guys these. <laughs> I wish you could be here and just test them with me. Uh, but that's the hard part with these sort of reviews on goggles is I can't really share the exact experience with you. I kind of just have to give my opinion. But all in all, is, as far as image quality is concerned, the HDO is just, yeah, they're really, a really, really nice image. Don't get me wrong. Great goggle. In fact, you could probably get a pair of these used for pretty cheap nowadays, but I'm not getting the details and the highlights and the shadows. Hey. My quad is getting angry. I've taken too much time, but I think we've said enough anyway. 
All right, guys, so here we have it, the Walksnail Avatar FPV VRX. It's cracking. Oh, well, that's a huge bummer. Hoping that I didn't destroy the VTX. You know, stupid mistake on my part. I think I'm only flying at 25 milliwatts also. Anywho. Okay, guys, here we are. The Walk Snail VRX attached to the HT0 goggles. Now, don't mind all the mess. I have banged together these two things as quickly as I possibly could because I have so limited time nowadays. But for now, let's just take the system out for some initial tests. And we're gonna go to a weird old barn because it is nighttime and it is cold, rainy Norway. So here we go. Okay, guys, it is slippery as heck. I almost died getting over here. What? Holy crap. <laughs> Look at this ice. Whoa, God, I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna definitely bite it. What? <laughs> but here we are in the old barn. You can see it's pretty dark in here, but we have a lot of pretty cool obstacles that we can fly around. Uh, the bummer is I had some pretty cool flights in here. Um, but the DVR didn't save. Okay, so this is uh, another part of the old barn, and you can see we have lights. So I think this will be a little bit better situation, hopefully, for the Walksdale system, because uh, if it doesn't look good in here, I can't imagine performing very well anywhere. Okay, well, that's a bummer. Uh, so I found the quad in this snowbank right here and it is dead. It won't power up. I get like a initial dee 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 from the ESC where basically I was just flying around here, got this red screen of death, game over. Anywho, so that concludes that test. But the cool part is the HD goggles do in fact work with the VRX pretty well. We're waiting on a firmware update to get that 1080p 60. So I'll do another follow-up video when we get that. Should be shortly. I think Carl said he's working on it tonight. So anyway, stay tuned guys. Cheers.